Hey guys, Carlos here from Angler's Lifestyle. I'm here at Quarry Lakes uh, fishing for these newly planted Latin and Lightning Trout. Uh, let me go ahead and show you one of the uh, catches that's happening right now. How many pound braid is that? Uh, oh my fun. god. Right. Do I gotta keep it? So as you can see, we have a few types of anglers here. And uh, here's another uh, hookup that's happening. Is that you, Andrew? Andrew, show me your fish. Nice. <laughs> Good job. So as you can see, uh, we've got anglers here that are uh, fishing for these uh, lightning trout on jigs, lures, um, spoons, uh, anything that uh, is necessary to catch them. It's about, uh, let's see, it's about noon time. Okay. And maybe the noon bite is happening. As you can see, one of the anglers also released that uh, fish. Uh, no problem. But anyway, uh, I tried uh, lure fishing as well using my uh, homemade spoon and unfortunately it got caught in some line out there. But I was so uh, distraught so I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and try and use magnet fishing and try and pull it back. So let me show you that clip real quick. Okay guys, so uh, my lure, my spoon got stuck over there, right? And so I decided to magnet fish it. See it? This is a pretty strong magnet here and my hook essentially just attached itself. So there we go. I thought that I've lost my favorite uh, spoon here. <laughs> pretty cool, huh? So yeah, I actually used one of my um, uh, elastic ties that are magnetized on each end. And I used this. Uh, I used to use these uh, rubber bands to uh, keep my uh, rod uh, from uh, separating. But uh, now I use these really cool um, magnetized on each end. And as you can see, these magnets are pretty strong. So I just hooked it up at the end of my line. I threw it right there, and it actually magnetized the hook of my spoon. So kind of cool. I was actually able to re retrieve my spoon, no problem. So anyway. Um, this is a good recommendation. Go check it out, guys. Uh, you know where I found it. I found it at Amazon. <laughs> anyway, my apologies. I haven't been uh, posting uh, much videos out there because, you know, honestly, I haven't been catching any either. Uh, it, I have like weeks in between that I haven't really caught anything. But uh, let me show you a couple of my catches at Shadow Cliff. Stay tuned. Me working on a cast. That far. Yeah, because I think you're releasing it late. Late? Late. Hey guys, check, check out Tommy. Uh, he, he gets to reel in. You see what he's reeling in? It's a boat. <laughs> it's George's boat. <laughs> It's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, try to keep it over here because your lines are right here. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
This is Tommy's catch for the day. Uh, boat. It's a boat. You take a picture of it. I have my uh, my camera going. Come on, Tommy. You're almost it's there. Almost there. <laughs> You're almost there, dude. Yeah, it's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so heavy when you're pulling it in. <laughs> hey, it looks like a big tuna. This is the one that uh, Tommy casted. I can got a fish right here. We're gonna fight. Bring him in right now. Whoa, this guy's big. So yeah, that uh, first fish that I caught was actually a fairly good size. And, uh, you know, as usual, I caught it on uh, the combination of green pumpkin and garlic. So not being able to catch fish on the shallow end on the left side where we normally fish, Janet and I decided to um, go to the dock past the uh, boat ramp. So this is the, actually the first time that uh, I've been on that dock. So let me show you the catch that I caught that day. Stay tuned. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait. Yep, there's fish in there. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm? Yeah. My first fish for a while. Come on, fishy. Yay. Very good. Hello. All right. Nice job. High five. Thank you. Finally caught one. <clears throat> I'm a shadow for the first right? Yep. 
course. So that was a 36 inch liter, you know, garlic and green pumpkin. Yep. So at least the lassins at the Shadow Cliff are consistent. They will definitely bite on the combination of garlic and green pumpkin. Um, you know, I've caught many fish with that combination using a 36 inch leader uh, casting fairly far out. So anyway, here at the Quarry Lakes, uh, here at the Cove, it's a little bit different. Uh, the water is actually uh, filled with a lot of these green moss. Not sure if you can see that. I don't know, at least it's not blue algae. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've been uh, using uh, power bait uh, this morning and I've also switched to a couple of different mice tails, but uh, I use one of these uh, red head and brown body. Let me show you my catch. Look at all these uh, lightning trout. <laughs> Look at them. You see them? They look like baby beluga. It's almost no fun because you can pretty much see them. And check out that light pink trout. Can you see it? Finally, I don't know what I got though. Finally, so I caught that lassen with this uh, type of mice tail where the head is actually red and the body is brown. I've been carrying this mice tails, you know, in the side pocket of my uh, bag, and you know they don't have any scent in them. So my suspicion is you can reuse these things, and I've re reused them before. You know, you know, if I've sprayed them with garlic and you know add a little bit of additive and all that. But for the most part, the mice tail, I think, uh, what drives fish crazy is their movement. So, you know, for those people that are wondering, can you reuse these mice tails? And the answer is yes, I've done it. And today, you know, here's my success. So stay tuned, hopefully we'll catch another one. Check it out, guys. Oh, 
the crane left, left their fish. Well guys, it looks like it's a one and done kind of day. And uh, you know, caught one here at uh, Cory Lakes using 24 inch leader and a brown and red mystel. So anyway, as always, come fish with us sometime. See ya.